whatever the dates were. But you must have had a pretty good relationship with Mater because there's some wonderful videos on YouTube of you playing concertos and him, or him, he's conducting you. It's, you know, he was, he was the perfect guy to have for a young greenhorn to have <laughs> as a uh, music director. He loved music and everything about his being, his face was just like, this is, this is great. <laughs> And so whenever I was nervous about something, he would look back because he conducted without a score. So he was always looking around the orchestra. <laughs> he would always talk about it. He wanted to see eyes. And he'd just look at you and he'd grin like, this is going to be cool. You know, so you, <laughs> you have that again. And you're about to play bum ba dum bum And he'd look at you like, you ready? This is going to be great. Go! Yeah! <laughs> and he's like, okay, if he's excited, why not? And so really, uh, that that facial experience and, and his demeanor was so encouraging for a young guy, as opposed to some of the older characters, someone like a Kurt Mazur, who I dearly yeah, sure. love, but his facial feature and his demeanor was very old school German. I am the boss and you're not. And just remember, whatever you do, sure. you're wrong. That was sort of his facial demeanor. Yeah. Um, and so and that's I, interesting that so you, I, brought I, Kurt, you brought Kurt Mazur, because I read somewhere that it said that... Uh, when Kurt Mazur became the musical director of the New York Phil, the orchestra sort of wanted a change of leadership. They wanted them to go in a different direction. So yeah. how did that, does that make sense to you? What, yeah, what does that it mean? Always, it always does, right? It, it's like, it's like, it's like politicians. It's like yeah, president. Sure. Um, whoever you've had, the country, the nation, the orchestra decides, well, we know his strengths and his weaknesses, and now we, we want to go this way. And so Zubin, in my mind, was he could conduct anything from any time period, but he was always accused of being kind of shallow in his interpretation. I think falsely, wrongly so. And he was so joyful that he wasn't serious enough. You know, there was too much smile in his face. That he's not, he wasn't serious <laughs> enough. So when he left, and, and uh, Mazur came in, that was the thing. We wanted someone who was much more deep into the music. Well, what we got was someone who was deep into the music, and believe me, there was no one better at doing Beethoven, Brahms, Schumann, the, the Germanic repertoire. I love doing that with Mazur, but he didn't have the capability to do the, the new pieces with the same you know, instantaneous flamboyance that Zubin could do. Um, so there was that. Well, then after a while, you know, when we get the next move, it's like, well, we need someone with that seriousness, but with a wider scope of repertoire. So we got Mazel. Okay. And we got someone with that age factor again, but had a wider scope of repertoire. And then when Mazel left and we got uh, Gilbert, uh, Alan Gilbert in, it was like, well, we need a new Lenny Bernstein. We've had all of these old guys now for the last two times. We need a young guy. So we got Alan Gilbert. And then it was like, well, we got Alan Gilbert, but he's so young and he's in this, you know, he's got growing to do and so then the next move. And that's the way things go. That's just, yeah, that's sure. the history. Yeah. So, so what was Alan Gilbert's mom and dad had been in the orchestra, hadn't they? He was quite yeah. young. And, that's what yeah. Amazing. That, that's what I said to him when he became music jury. I said, Alan, I remember you as a little kid as nine on my first tour. Yeah. And he was sitting back there with a the Rubik's Cube. Him and, him and his sister doing these Rubik's Cubes. And we're all, all the orchestra members standing around being gassed by these little kids doing this. I said, now you're the guy that's going to end up having to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it like being uh, the principal trumpet of an orchestra? You've got all those great conductors, but obviously I know that the rest of the time you've got other conductors coming in and going. What's it like being a principal trumpet of a New York Phil when there's, an there's a conductor in that you don't agree with and they're doing it like you don't want it to go? How well, frustrating is that? I learned, I learned from her, and this is, this is very true. It's my job, it's our job to do what the conductor wants. We are his instrument. It's our job to do that. Now, having said that, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, having said that, there are some people that come in and, and th I think this happens in a lot of groups, right? You, you, it, we would try to do what the conductor wanted to do. So by the first concert Thursday night, we were really trying to do what he wanted to. But by the time we got through Friday and Saturday and next Tuesday, the fourth concert, we probably had drifted back to the way that we wanted to yeah. play it. <laughs> he was now out of control. He wasn't rehearsing us. 
and he was now losing control and we were taking, we were beginning to do what we wanted to do with it. So that's, again, that's just the way, that's the nature, that's human nature. I want it my way. Uh, I can remember very well, um, <laughs> uh, and I'll just, guess I'm not being mean. Um, I can remember doing a Mollus Fitz. We did, I, I can't tell you how many Mollus Fitz I've done. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, and I've done them with great conductors, really some terrific conductors. But we, I remember one time we did it with Michael Tilson Thomas. Okay. And I don't think I got any further than, but da da da, <laughs> where I've been cut off. And I was like, I only got four notes out. What are <laughs> it's just like, and I remember him telling me, giving me a whole lecture as to what he wanted to do. And, and by the time he was done and we were done with the next 20 minutes of rehearsal, I was like, I don't even know what to do with the opening of this anymore. And I was, I can remember joking and saying, you know, I felt like I wanted to put a paper bag over my head and put up a sign that said, this does not represent the opinions of the first trumpet player. <laughs> but, you know, my job is to do it the way he wanted. Yeah. That was his thing. So I, I did try, but to be truthful, by the time we got to probably Saturday night, I was doing it my way. Yeah.